We're grateful for all of you that have come here tonight to be with us. It is good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. And we welcome those with us, those who are with us in live stream. We're grateful for that media whereby we can have fellowship one with another. We're in the book of Amos. This will be our 15th lesson in this book. I want to say a word about, about this prophet and this book before I begin. As you know, God is the theme of Scripture. You aren't. You're not what it's all about. You benefit from it, but this book, from beginning to end, is about God. He's the most frequently mentioned person. Mm -hmm. It's his purpose it is vault that is set before you. It's his people that are the prominent people. It's his purpose, which is the prominent purpose. It's his son that saved us. Mm -hmm. So he is the prominent person, and God doesn't change. He cannot change. Amen. In fact, he made this affirmation to Malachi, I, the Lord, change not. Amen. So what we're being exposed to in the book of Amos is God. Amen. You ever want to forget that? God has not changed his view of sin yeah. or of sinners mm -hmm. or of transgression. He has in Christ Jesus provided a way for you to change. He's not going to change. So when he tells you what he thinks about sin, you need to listen up. And thank God he's made a way for you to get out of that category. Because if you don't get out of the category of sinner, you're going to be damned. God's went on record here. What he, he's told us this. There's no ambiguity about this at all. So God be praised for thanks for salvation. Amen. In Christ Jesus, it uh, allows God to remain the same, which he is going to be going to anyway. <laughs> He's to remain, and he has become just or righteous in saving sinners. Of course, that's categorically stated in Romans 3.26. He's just, means righteous, and justifier of him that believes in Jesus because of what Jesus did. Because, now listen, I know most of us know this, but perhaps sometimes it gets away from you. For God to save you, it's got to be right for him to do it. He can't save you if it's not right to do it. Jesus made it right for him yes. to do it. Amen. We're going to be in Amos' third chapter beginning tonight. Now men, <coughs> religious men, are fond of talking about the love of God and the grace of God and what he's done for them, and they, indeed these things do need to be talked about. They ought to be talked about it, about a lot, I, they ought to be talked about a lot, mm -hmm. but it must be from an enlightened mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. point of view. From the beginning, God has made known that when what He provides for His people, what He gives when He gives them like certain privileges and gifts, He expects appropriate conduct in return. And don't think for one moment that this has been dropped. Yes, amen. That's right. Now, a lot of Christians, I was about to say most, but I'm going to be modest, mm -hmm. are very sloppy in the way they live. Yeah. yeah, this is not an appropriate response to the great salvation God has brought us. Yeah, right. Now, he's going to prove this to you in the book of Amos. He didn't give the Israelites what he's given you, but he, he expected appropriate conduct to be from them. If you doubt this, the book of Genesis opens up in the third chapter 
There's one man and one woman. God's created them both. God made a garden for them. God put them in the garden, and before chapter 3 is over, he's kicked them out. Not for a bunch of sin like, like us. One. Why did he do it? Because that kind of conduct was unacceptable. God just will not tolerate this. It's unacceptable to God Amen. to have an inappropriate response yes. to what he's done. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this right here, but I have a pretty good idea how God feels about people that are, spend an hour a week in some kind of concentrated gathering about him. I have a pretty good idea what he thinks of that. And this is all over. This is all over. Churches have tailored their programs, nearly 100% of them, for these kind of people. They've cut it short. It's infrequent. It's small. It's not demanding. It's a bad situation. I know how God feels about this, and you should know too. That we're finding out in here how God feels about it. Yes. You said God expects appropriate conduct from those He saves. The first thing that came to my mind was the king, and when the servant went to him, and he forgave this this large sum large of money death. he owed him. But then he went out. And he took this man and threw him into prison for a small yes, sum of right. money. And it's mm -hmm. just like what people are doing now. They're just yep. forgetting the Lord forgave them and going on as if nothing happened. That's right. Yeah, amen. See, there's a, there's a kind of a mentality that has pervaded yeah. Christendom. And where instead of changing people, people are trying to help people. Trying to help them to live a better. This, this is not satisfactory. You already got a helper. What do you, how dare you go to someone else to help you be godly? Yeah, that's right. How dare you do this? Amen. When God sent his son, giving you the Holy Spirit, giving you, how dare people do this? I tell you, these self-help ministries and recovery programs should go belly up, every one of them. Amen. They're a fraud. Amen. They're a disgrace to Jesus. They present a picture of Christ that presents Jesus as though he were impotent and can't do anything with people and has to have him. God can recreate people. Amen. Amen. Put a new heart in them. Yeah. Move them to love him yeah. and his people mm -hmm. and be concerned about the lost. God can, God can make a person that way. He doesn't need any help right. at all. Yeah, he's planning yeah. to do that. That's yeah. right. Amen. It wasn't an accident. Yeah. <laughs> and officially, he kicked them out of the garden so they wouldn't stay in That's that right. state. That's right. Amen. So Unless they, they eat the tree of life and yes. live forever. Amen. Mm. Yet in their sin is the yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. New things shall I do, and shall you not know it? Yeah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the flood was another demonstration of this. Yes. See, in Eden, they violated a command. Don't eat of that fruit. That was one commandment. One, people didn't do any better when they got ten. These were two people that were morally perfect. Innocent, probably is a better idea. Neither one of them had ever had a deviant thought or committed a wrong deed. And one time... They weren't assaulted day after day after day by Satan. One time, they fell. One commandment. So if you, if you want to get into God's favor by doing what he says, you should have learned that this, you have, you're going to have to have a savior, a deliverer. The flood, they violated the command in the flood Violence covered the face of the earth. Sin began to mushroom. God just destroyed all but eight people. 
in Sodom and Gomorrah, they violated the te that in the at the flood. They violated the testimony of nature mm -hmm. and the testimony of conscience, yeah. both of which were given when men were created. Mm -hmm. In Sodom and Gomorrah, they violated nature. They pursued intimacy outside the bounds of nature. I don't care what people say about the sin of sodomy. God's already spoken on it. And I don't like the word homosexual either. Yeah, uh -huh. I don't like it. It's too stinking psychological. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm tired of hearing people approach it uh -huh. from a psychological point of view. Sodomy is the bottom sin of the ladder. Yeah. Romans 1, if you don't know Romans 1, and familiarize yourself with it, Romans 1 says that it was the result of divine abandonment. Amen. Uh -huh. yeah. That God gave them over to unclean lust, and that's when sodomy, men, men, women, that's when it broke up, yeah. when God left them. Yeah. This is just scriptural doctrine. I don't know people argue about it, but we need preachers to stand up and shout them down. Amen. Right. Just shout them down. Amen. They're not right. Yeah, this is that, see, this is all background to Amos. Yeah, uh -huh. That God never has been tolerant of sin. He never, from the very first time he hasn't. The love of God and the grace of God cannot remove God's hatred for sin. Uh -huh. yeah. It's still got it. It's still a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living to God. Come alongside what you're saying there. It's not for man to define what sin is. God yes, has to define amen. what sin yes, is. Amen. So whenever it, it, it may sound jarring to some people, what you just said, it may sound jarring. It may uh, arouse <clears throat> accusations against people who hold what you, what you just expressed. But the point is that God has clearly spoken yeah. And it is, it's not our right or our position mm -hmm. to be able to answer to God and say, well, but we don't think you should call that sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. We, don't, we don't think that you're, that you're right in saying mm -hmm. that this is not natural and good yeah. Yeah. and equal with other things because God is the creator. He made it. He made it like it's supposed to be, and if it deviates mm -hmm. from yeah. that, Amen. he has every right. In fact, he yeah. is being just in saying the truth that mm -hmm. it is not right. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. the, I've said this frequently, but I will say it again. We are living in a biblically illiterate society. People in the church do not know the Bible. Not only do they not know what it means, they have no idea what it says. Uh -huh, yeah. All people have their favorite verses and all this sort of thing. But see, people are biblically illiterate. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the reason for all this yes. difficulty. Because mm -hmm. God has spoken on all these issues. Amen. He has moved men to write right. it down. Yes. Yeah. Right. And he's passed it down from generation uh -huh. to generation. But the people have not paid attention to the Bible they shop at For All Bookstore for other books. Mm -hmm. I'm not against books. I've written books myself. How can I be against them? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the testimony of Scripture, there is no substitute yes. for knowing what God has said. Amen. You should read the Bible. About the, about the 20th time uh -huh. you read the full Bible, it'll, you kind of begin to... After the 20th time, I'm telling you the truth, yes. after you've read the complete Bible through 20 times, uh -huh. you begin to kind of yes. see. Yeah, if it's possible for God to hate sin more, which I don't know if he has a perfect hatred for it, so I don't know if he can grow in it, but if it's possible, after Jesus laid down his life in order yeah. to take it away, how much more does he hate That's it right. now? That's right. Mm -hmm. See, God... Well, you see what God did to Jesus when the sin of the world was laid upon him? Yeah. He made him a curse. Mm -hmm. Galatians 3.13. Mm -hmm. That's what God did to Jesus. When, when your sin was put on him, that's what God did to him. Mm -hmm. That should settle the issue about what God... 
Well, let's get down to Amos. We're in Amos 3, 1 through 3. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? All right, it's a very... This is God. These are words of God. To a chosen people. These weren't words spoken to the people in Babylon or Syria or Egypt. It's just spoken to God's people. Hear, the, hear this word. I gave an idea that Amos wasn't whispering when he said this. Of course, you know what I think about whispered preachers, too. I think they should take their microphones away. Make people speak up. They could hear them. Hear this word. What do you mean? Hear this word. Just like the sound of it? Is that what he meant? Well, you do have to hear the sound of it, but that's... Some versions say, um, listen to obey. That's what the word means here. Listen, not without a curiosity. Listen with a mind of, if this is God speaking, I'm going to listen, I'm going to do what he says. That's what we mean when we say hear. Hear this word. It means to understand it. You know, if someone gets up here and speaks to you in Latin, you you can't unless you can speak Latin. You don't, you didn't hear what he said. Right. Be hearing presumes you understand what he said, and that you consent to it. Here in Scripture, when you hear, faith comes by hearing, uh -huh. uh, not by reading. That's right. I say not by reading, uh -huh. by hearing. Means you consent to it. You agree with it. You give heed to it. You see, the spirit of Israel has been revived in the nominal church. Nominal church means by church by name only. Is all there's 160 buildings in town that have church over the top of it. In Joplin, 100, 160. Did you know that? There's a hundred and so you have church over the top. But the spirit of Israel has been revived in a lot of these places. Now here's what God said to Israel. Deuteronomy 1.43 I spake unto you and ye would not hear. You would not hear. But rebelled against the commandment of the Lord. Here, here, here's a, here it is again. See, we're saying, Amos says, hear the word. But here's a background that Israel hadn't been doing this. Here's the Second Kings 17, 14. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks like to the neck of their fathers. They did not believe in the Lord their God. All right, see, she's diagnosed it for us. Nehemiah said this, Nehemiah 9, 29, Yet they dealt proudly and hearkened not to thy commandments, but sinned against thy judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them, and withdrew the shoulder and hardened the neck and would not hear. <clears throat> why, why do people demand short sermons? Of course, some sermons I've heard, they ought to be short. But I'm talking about the truth. Why do they want short sermons? I'll tell you why they don't want to hear. Yeah. Everyone else is lengthening their program. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, you can imagine now they, this week the NBA's got the finals going. Yeah. What do you think would happen if they said, are we pass a new rule? Mm -hmm. It's just going to be, each quarter is going to be two minutes. Oh. Why, there'd be an outcry. Yeah, that's right. Or some of these move theaters have a lot of these they said we're no longer going to have any movies longer than 10 minutes what would people say would be about Christ hey all the money we pay to get in there we're not going to have any of these short things a church is the only people shortening their program even Walmart keeps open 24 hours 
So why don't why why is it that lengthy servers are assuming that the word of God is being spoken? It's because they won't hear. This is how God looks at it now, people. This is how God looks at it. The Israelites told their prophets, stop prophesying. We don't want to hear anymore. God said they wouldn't hear. It wasn't just that we're we don't understand. Of course, people like that, they shouldn't say we don't understand. They should say we are dumb. We are ignorant. That's what they should say. Then maybe we could kind of deal with it. Now God calls upon them to hear. Now hear, hear what I'm saying to you. He's not going to say a blessing. He's not going to say I love you, although he told them that many times before. I'm not going to say it this time. He's going to tell them he's not willing to tolerate their insolence anymore. Hear my word that I have spoken against you. Against? God spoke against his people? That's yes. <laughs> what he said. Against you. I'm speaking. Listen to what I'm saying. It's against you. Hmm. That's what Jesus said. You know those churches yes. in Revelation? Yes. Five of them were defective. And he said, I have something against you. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. oh, you don't want Jesus to say to you, I got something against you. Amen. He's given you a salvation that's abundant with everything you need to avoid that being said. Yes. These are the people of God that God gave Canaan to them. Their own private land. He created the nation himself from an impotent man and a barren woman. And now he says, I'm going to speak against you. It's the word against those he chose. It's against those he gave the law to. It's against those he delivered. It's against those he led. It's against those he gave prophets to. That's the people he's against. Does anyone think that there couldn't be such a thing as a church God was against? Well, you need to need to take heed here. Even against this whole family. Whole family? All of us? All of us aren't bad and all of them weren't bad. But all of you, no, no, it's a judgment against the whole, whole family. Might be argued that, well, there were remnants. There was a remnant there like Amos. He's a remnant. There are other members that were a remnant. Isaiah 16, 14, Isaiah said the remnant will be very small and feeble. Oh, it's a sad thing, but through history, remnant means that some people didn't cave in. Yeah. When the remnant was very small <laughs> and very feeble. And here, the whole house. I'm speaking against the whole family. It's the kind of judgment God passed on Israel when he made everybody wander for 40 years. Aaron was in there. Right. Miriam was in there. Joshua and Caleb were in there. Amen. They all had to suffer. Yes. Amen. See, there's some judgments like this now. Yes. We don't prefer it. We want to do everything possible to avoid this. But just, I'm just showing you this is, this is possible for a lot of people to be paid because of a few people. The kind of judgment took place when Judah was carried off into the Babylonian captivity. They were all taken. Even the young men were taken. Even the boys were taken. They didn't done anything wrong, but they they were done. They were taken. When Achan, remember Achan? And Israel, when they took Jericho, God said, "Don't touch it. Don't take anything. Don't take anything out of this city. It's accursed." Said, take all the gold and all that and put that in the temple treasure, t tabernacle treasury. Don't, don't. And there was Achan. He saw a really, he saw a modern set of clothes, you know, Babylonian garment, yes. twenty shekels of silver and a wedge of gold. And he took it, and the whole nation suffered because of it. They went out to a little dinky city to overcome. It was nothing, nothing compared to Jericho. AI, AI beat the socks off of them. Joshua is a 
weeping and lamenting about it. What in the world happened? God says, I'd stop that weeping. There's sin in the camp. You got somebody amidst you that did something wrong, and that's why you're suffering. They finally found out who it was. It was Achan. Achan, his wife, his sons and daughters, and all his possessions were stoned and stacked up in a heap and burned. One person, everybody suffered because of Jeroboam, because of the sins of Jeroboam, the scripture says, all Israel suffered because of the sins of one man. Yes, says. Earlier you were talking about one man sinning and a lot more people suffering. I thought about when one person in the body of Christ is struggling, then the whole body struggles. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, the preeminent example, of course, is Adam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Adam sinned. Yeah. The whole race. <laughs> the whole race was constituted sin. This is what he said, Romans 5. The whole grace was made sinners mm -hmm. and condemned. And Amen. all of them, you die mm -hmm. because Adam sinned. Mm -hmm. As in Adam, all die. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. Mm -hmm. See, one person sinned, everybody. So here's, so this shouldn't surprise us that mm -hmm. all Israel was God was against them, even though every person in Israel was, wasn't necessarily bad, Amos being an obvious person. And this, who, who, who is this Israel? This is which I brought up out of the land of Egypt, that Israel. The fact that God brought Israel out of Egypt is frequently mentioned in Scripture. I gave you a few of the mentions here. A lot is brought up, which brought you out of Egypt. Hundreds of years after he did it, he said, I brought you out of Egypt. Every time they sent you, I brought you out of Egypt. Reminded them of it. Israel cried out to the Lord when they were in Egypt, remember? God heard them. God delivered them. And then when they come out and cross the Red Sea, boy, they were singing, man. They were singing. The horse and the rider he had cast into the sea. The Lord had triumphed gloriously. You know, and they were singing. They got a little bit further down the road, and they started murmuring. Yeah. Yeah. It went bad with them because they did. The law cured. The law was holy, spiritual, and good. The law could not cure their murmuring hearts. They murmured against Moses and Aaron, and they murmured against the Lord Himself. Now, apostolic doctrine looks back at that, and it says this, 1 Corinthians 10, 11, and 12. All these things happened mm -hmm. to them, happened to them for examples. Mm -hmm. And they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Yeah. The Israel assumed because they got out, mm -hmm. they were safe. Don't you you can't assume this. Mm -hmm. Israel's an example. They got out of Egypt, but they did not get but the ones that sent did not get into Canaan. Mm -hmm. Now there are some people, probably infinitely more than we dare to imagine, God only knows this. We don't know who these are, that their sins were forgiven, but they're not going to enter heaven. Because somewhere between then and death, they fell away. Yes, that's right. Amen. Israel's an example, telling you that this is the truth. I brought them out of Egypt. They're written for our sakes upon whom the ends of the world are come. There isn't going to be any more examples. We're living at the end of the age, yeah, the end of the world. This is the last phase of the world. Amen. So God's not yeah. going to be given any further lessons. Mm -hmm. He's already given the lessons. Mm -hmm. Now you keep yourself in the love of God. Amen. Fight a good fight of faith. Amen. Resist the devil. Be perfect holiness in the fear of the Lord. Do what God said to do. Mm -hmm. If you feel you can't do it, ask God to help you and he'll help you do it. But get the thing done because there isn't going to be any more examples. Mm -hmm. We've got them already. We owe our salvation and our preservation to the Lord just as surely as Israel did. 
And as long as you keep that in mind, you will work out your salvation with fear and trembling. But as soon as you forget that, and you begin to assume, like maybe someone said, once you're in, you're always in, you know, whatever. Once saved, always saved, however you want to say it. And you begin to think that way. Israel's in the background. They say, hey, yeah. Yeah. didn't you read our record? I mean, how dumb can you get? Adam speak up, didn't you read my record? Yeah. Yeah. See, it's, these things are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world will come. So I'm talking to you, Israel, God says. Listen to what I'm saying now. Now he's going to say something here that contradicts some theology. But this is God talking. You only have I known of all families of the earth. So does God look the same upon everybody? How could you possibly get that out of that statement? How could any person of sound mind read that and say God thinks the same of everybody? You only have I known. Known here is not intellectual, no. Some of the dumbest, most impractical people in the world know up here. They know up here. But they don't know enough to keep from taking drugs and being drunk and being up in immoral. <laughs> you you got to have, this is a different kind of know. This is a know like Adam knew Eve. That's right. Amen. It wasn't like, mm -hmm. we're glad to meet you, Sister yeah. Eve. It wasn't that kind of thing. You only have another, you're familiar with, you're acquainted with. You know how they are. You only have I known. You're the only people. <laughs> the world was pretty big then, too. You only, you're the only people I was involved with. Huh. Yeah. You're the only people I made myself known to. You're the only people that found out what, I, what good things I could do. You're the only people. You only have I known. Moses told the people of God, Deuteronomy 7, 6 and 7, God had chosen you to be a special people to himself. I says, God did this. Now God did this. So don't be telling us God doesn't have special people. Don't. Well, we just have to rebuke you if you do. Don't, yeah. don't say stuff like that. Yeah. God has spoken on this. You're a special people to me. Mm -hmm. I made you that way. Yeah. It wasn't because I weighed everybody and you kind of weighed out the best. It wasn't that. Yes, Sister June. Yeah, Paul, Paul mentioned some of the things that distinguished Israel from the rest of the nations yeah, of the earth. He said, uh, Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory mm -hmm. and the covenants mm -hmm. and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises whose are the fathers and of whom is concerning the flesh Christ came who is over all God blessed forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that yes. that's the sense special. in which they were special. Mm -hmm. The heathen did yeah. not have any of these things unless they looked to Israel mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. proselytized. <laughs> And God's choice of Israel was based upon his previous choice of Abraham, right. Isaac, yeah. and Jacob. Yeah. And he told them quite freely, I'm blessing you because of Abraham. Yeah. So his choice of Israel was based on his other, another choice, mm -hmm. which was the choice of Abraham. Yeah. And he chose Isaac because he was from Abraham, and he chose Jacob because he was from Isaac. God chose them. Mm -hmm. I don't think God chooses. Please. Someone tells you, they say, please don't insult my intelligence. Mm -hmm. yeah. God chose him. Amen. He yeah. chose Abraham. Abraham had a couple of brothers, yeah. Haran and Nahor. He didn't choose Aaron and Haran and Nahor. That's right. He chose Abraham. Mm -hmm. huh? Abraham had eight sons, Ishmael, Isaac, and six through Keturim, and God chose Isaac. Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. God chose Jacob. 
He said that God chooses. Amen. It's what he's telling us. I chose you now. Mm -hmm. You owe your distinctiveness to me. Yeah. Amen. I chose you. Not only has God himself affirmed that he's chosen them above all the nations, he's announcing, he's basing his revealed reaction to Israel's manners upon the fact he knew them above all other people. So because of that, because I gave you special privileges, I expect special responses. Amen. We're, being exposed to, we're being exposed to God here, see? If God gives you a lot, he expects a lot. He gave Paul a lot. He got a lot from Paul. Hmm? And I don't know of anyone God really gave a little to in Christ. That psalm is fulfilled in Jesus. He daily loads us with benefits. So God loads you up. You better be bringing blessings by the wagon load back. Therefore, because I knew you above other people, therefore, I will punish you. As God said this, I will, I will punish you. Some other versions, American Standard Version says, I'll visit upon you. You're going to get the result. What you have done has awakened something in me, and I'm yeah. going to... Mm -hmm. Judah? Before you get too far, off of this point of God infesting in people, I thought that God is not going to waste what he gives. He, when he gives it, when he gives things to us, we can't be the servant that folds it up in a napkin and buries it in the ground. We have to be the one that takes it to the bank, trades for it, and we have, we have to be the ones, the servant who says, here is what you gave me, and I've doubled it, mm -hmm. and brought glory to your name, and I can give you more back than you gave me originally. That's right. You say, what's going to happen to that? those buried talents. He's going to give it to somebody else. Amen. That's what he did. Mm -hmm. He says, give it to the one that has ten. Yes. Now may I share something personal with you? I'm banking on this. Amen. I'm banking on picking up a lot of extra stuff mm -hmm. at the day of judgment. Yeah. Because everybody who received something from God and was unfaithful to it is going to be taken and given to somebody else who was faithful. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what he said. This is what he taught. That's right. So if people don't recognize you now, so what? Yeah. So what? If God recognizes you, he's going to make it public. There's going to come a day when you'll be noted publicly for being faithful. So you don't have to seek fame and seek mm -hmm. the approval of men. You don't have to do this. Mm -hmm. You serve God wholeheartedly. Yeah. And whatever, whoever doesn't, what God gave him won't be wasted. It's going to be given to somebody else. Amen. Therefore, I'll punish you. Hear the word punish. It's not just like a, like a reaction of a flash of anger, you know, mm -hmm. standpoint. It's not that type of thing. It's very deliberate. He examines the Israelites, and he reacts to what he sees with his, his nature reacting. This is his nature reacting. This isn't anger like men have a flash of anger, lose their temper. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is not what this is. This is an expression of God's real nature. Mm -hmm. Remember, Cain said in Genesis uh, 4.13, my punishment is greater than I can bear. A okay, punishment. Punished. God one time said, Isaiah 13, 11, this is a vow. God said this. This, this is going to happen. Yeah. I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. All right, he went on record now. Yeah. I want to do it. May not be in this lifetime, this world. I'm going to do it. I'm going to punish the wicked for their iniquity. All right, this is the day of salvation. This is the time for you to get out of that category if you're in it. Yes. And to be separate and to receive his salvation. And then no punishment. Then your reward, not punishment. 
18 times the scripture says in scripture, God says, I will punish. Yes. Yeah, some people don't believe God punishes. Mm -hmm. We come across this, uh, I do, in my Facebook ministry, and a lot of Facebook people, they are, uh -huh. they're not even in kindergarten yet, yeah. you know, spiritually. But they'll say something like, God can't do anything bad. Mm -hmm. Was the flood like good? Was Sodom and Gomorrah good? Mm -hmm. he, they don't understand God. It, yeah. isn't that he does so, it isn't that he does something bad. What he does is right. Yes. Amen. God doesn't do anything. It's bad from the human point of view, but it, it's, it's right. Yeah. 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 It's good, it's good on a different level. That's it's right. Yeah. Different frame of reference. This is what prompted Moses to say, Be sure your sins will find you out. Your sin are like a dog that never leaves you. Yeah. Unless you forget, confess your sin and forsake it, mm -hmm. your sins will trail along with you like a dog, yeah. and pretty soon they'll bite you. Mm -hmm. Be sure your sins will find you out. Uh -huh. See, Cain, is, he, tried to, he tried to hide it, buried his brother. Mm -hmm. God said his blood's crying out from the ground. Yes, amen. Be sure your sin will find you out. Israel's uh, learning that. Now, when they were beginning as a nation, they were at the border of Canaan. Moses is getting ready to, for God to take, take him out. He's going to die, and God's going to bury him. And this is one of the last things he said, Deuteronomy 27. It shall come to pass... If thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and, over, and overtake yeah. thee. Yeah. The curses were read to them one by one yeah. from Mount Ebal, Deuteronomy 27, 14 to 26. And after everyone was read, all Israel shouted, Amen. Amen. Yeah. But now, in Amos' day, they forgot yeah. mm -hmm. about all those curses yeah. that would overtake them, that chase you down. Mm -hmm. I will punish you for all your iniquities. Ezekiel foretold a time when God would cleanse people of all their iniquity. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 36, 33. Isaiah prophesied of a Messiah that all the iniquities of us all would be laid upon Christ. But in this case, there would be punishment for all their iniquities, which had accrued, you see. Jesus told the people of his day that they were responsible for the shedding of the blood of Zechariah the prophet centuries before. He yeah. said the blood of Zechariah is going to be held accountable for this generation. So if you, if you align yourself against the people of God, yeah. it's recorded in the books that you were against all the people of God way back to Abel. This is how God works. <laughs> On the other hand, if you love the people of God and love God, then you're part of God's whole family. For your iniquities, it would come upon them. Why is God going to do this? Because I chose you. I loved you above all other nations. See, you, I favored you above everybody else. I can't let your sin go by. Yes, amen. The fact that I favored you doesn't move me to let your sin go by. Yes, amen. This is God now talking. God hasn't changed. That's right. Unless the person wants to pioneer the thought that God can change. Mm -hmm. He was not fail to see this aspect of the divine nature. We've got to see this. Men may think God has changed, mm -hmm. but he's not. It's still, according to apostolic doctrine, a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Whew, you don't want that. Don't provoke him. That's a dangerous thing. Don't irritate God. Mm. Yes. I've done some things in my past life that I, I know the irritated God. As soon as I recognize it, well, I confessed that thing and got away from it as far as I could. Don't irritate God. Yes. Don't quench the spirit. Don't grieve the spirit. Don't cause Jesus to say, I've got something against you. 
I'm going to take away your candlestick. Mm -hmm. You don't shape up. If you don't repent, I'm going to, you aren't going to be around anymore. Yes, that's right. You don't want that to happen. So in Amos, we're being exposed to the real God. See, this is the real God. Then he asked this question, and it's a, quite a common text of Scripture. Can two walk together except they be agreed? He's going to reason with his people. He's going to reason with them, see. Some point when God's communicating with you through his word, at some point he begins to reason with you. Remember Isaiah 118 says, come now, let's reason together. Let's, let's reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet at all, be white as snow, they be as crimson, they'll be as wool. So let's, let's reason it. God wants to reason it out because, see, sin is unreasonable. If you can reason it out with God, you'll see it too. You'll see it too. It's unreasonable. Let's reason together. So he's going to reason with them now. Can two walk together? Well, what do you mean, two walk together? Some verses rightly read, travel together. Start traveling together. Walk in unity, the International Standard Version said. The Message Bible says walk hand in hand. The idea is of two people traveling together. It's more than just friendship. Friendship is no doubt involved, but it's more than that. It has to do with a journey, with making a journey together to a specific place for a specific purpose. Now, can two do that if they're not agreed? Except to be agreed. How can two take a journey together if they're not going to the same place? What if one's going to Dan up at the top and the other's going to Beersheba down at the bottom of the promised land? Can they travel together? Can someone going to Dan, another person to Beersheba, can they travel together? No, they can't travel together. They're not agreed. Some versions read, unless they made an appointment. New American Standard Bible. God's Word Bible says, unless they've agreed to do so. Or without meeting first. Or without agreeing on the direction, New Living Translation. Amplified Bible says, except they make an appointment and have agreed. We're both going to the same place. We're both going for the same purpose. And we're both going at the same time. Agreed? Do we agree? All right. Two can walk together. They're agreed. Now, there is something to be said about agreeing on various points of doctrine, but that's not the point here. This has more to do with objective mm -hmm. yeah. or purpose or target. If we're speaking of a destination, two could not travel together, mm -hmm. one to Dan, one to Beersheba. Or one person's looking for a cool climate and one person looking for a hot climate. All right, they can't. <laughs> they got two different destinations. They can't travel together. One's looking for work and the other's looking for entertainment. All right, they can't. They can't travel together. Concerning Israel and God, God had a fundamental objective. It was that the people would be a kingdom of priests. That's how he said it. But at some point, they adopted another another purpose. They couldn't walk together. Not, not, not that it was inconvenient to walk together, they couldn't walk together. Yeah. God's not going to change where he's going. Yeah, that's right. God's not going to change his purpose. Say, All right, you're such a nice person. I can see that you need a little help, so I'll, I'll modify what I will expect from the people. You, you, you don't have to really be holy. And there are people that say that. Mm -hmm. They teach people this. Yeah. But I, really, I don't really mean be holy. I, I, don't, I mean try and be holy. Yeah. Ah, if you can just try. Well, let me, tell you, let me tell you something. The human race has done a miserable job at trying. Amen. Yeah. Can I get it? Yes. As we've been talking about this, can two walk together except they be 
agreed. I considered in Pilgrim's Progress when helpful mm -hmm. and Christian when they were walking together and then ignorance came along. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it did appear as if they were entering into the same destination at the same time, but mm -hmm. their wants were different. Yeah, that's right. And it got yeah. to the point where Christian and hopeful, they fell behind yeah. because they didn't want to be up there with ignorance because yeah. of it, his conduct, his speech. Amen. They couldn't walk together. Yeah, that's right. You can see this, can't you, where he's, where he's going with this. How can two walk together except to be agreed? Now, as I told you, that God's purpose was spelled out in the covenant. The Ten Commandments, according to Exodus 34, 28, were the words of the covenant. Thou shalt, thou shalt not. The covenant was you do that. That was the covenant. But the people had to agree to it. Under the old covenant, the covenant didn't, wasn't instituted until the people agreed to what God says. So the covenant was do all of this all the time without fail. Three different times Israel said they'd do it. Three different times. When Moses first laid before the people all the words that God had commanded him, Exodus 19.8, the people said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. That's number one. Number two, Moses heard all the words of the Lord in his judgments up on the mount. Exodus 24.3, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has said will we do. That's second time. Third time after Moses prepared a book, God said, Write all this in a book and read it to the people. Write all this in a book. That'd be Genesis through Deuteronomy. And you read it at one standing. <laughs> I could only imagine if... If this Sunday someone said, said Brethren, everybody stand, let's rise to the reading of the word. I'm now going to read the first five books of the Bible. <laughs> you slipped a cog somewhere. After he read the book of the covenant and all his ordinances, see, this had all the, what we call a ceremonial law, the feasts and where to go and all this sort of thing, clean and unclean. All that the Lord has said, we will do. And then he added, and be obedient. Oh, so that's three times. So if, if you say it enough, it happens. You, know, you think that'd happen. Yeah. So I said the objective of be of the people was, Exodus 19, 6, be a kingdom of priests to God. The stipulation was that they must obey every word God said all the time without a single deviation. They thought, they thought they could do it. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't. They didn't. Yeah. I'm not going to say they couldn't. They didn't. Mm -hmm. And so God said they broke my covenant. Yes, amen. That's Jeremiah 31, 32. Which my covenant they break. Now he's going to unleash the curses they read about back there at Mount Ebal. Yes. Those 12 Boy, you want to read them sometime. It puts your hair on top of your head, let me tell you. When you read those curses, they'd overtake them. But they forgot all about those curses. Now God's going to unleash them to them. Because they broke the covenant. Amos is announcing judgment because of specific sins. Now, he, he spelled it out to them, Remember? said, you gave wine to the Nazarites. Yeah, yeah. Right. Nazarites couldn't drink wine. Yeah. God said, you, you gave wine to the Nazarites. You told those young preacher boys they could drink beer. Yeah. Well, yeah, you've right. got to bring it up today. Yeah, People right. don't understand. Huh? You did that. Yeah. You sold the poor mm -hmm. for a pair of shoes. Anyway, there were four specific sins right. came upon him because he broke the covenant. I said, what, what's the lesson we can learn from all of this? If we desire for the Lord to walk with us, you've got to have the same objectives he has. Amen. You have got to be going where the captain of salvation is leading Jesus has not been sent to accompany you. Mm, amen. Yeah. Right. He's called you to accompany yeah, Christ. Right. It's all the difference in the world, isn't it? Yeah, and until you agree with that, you can't walk with Christ. 
You shouldn't expect Jesus to be with you if you're doing something he's not doing. That's right. Or if you have a different purpose than he has. Or your life centers in you instead of him. Do you really think Jesus is going to walk with you? Well, he won't. Be sure he won't. Amen. Amen. You've got to be with him. Yes. You started out that way. When you were born again, God put you in Christ. You were joined to the Lord, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. See, you started out that way. Yeah. But at some point, there are some people, Satan lured off the path. And they started going another direction. And so it can't, God can't walk with them. But they're agreed. Yeah. Yes. yes there are some people who claim to be following this captain of salvation but they're on the path that runs parallel to the straight and narrow way it's another allegory in pilgrim's progress when christian and i think is it's still helpful that's with him or having are troubling to, toiling on one road and then right across from them they see another road that appears to be much more pleasant so they get on that road yeah. and it takes them away mm -hmm. it's not parallel yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's it not like railroad track parallel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That other road is going to another <coughs> destination. That's so right. it's, not, yeah. it's not going to end up the same place. Yeah. That's parallel means they're both headed uh -huh. the same way. Yeah. Like God God's election uh -huh. is parallel with his love. That's right. Yeah. But this other way is a way that he going another direction. Yeah. If it, it looks for it does look at first, like it is per parallel. Yeah, that is true. It does look yeah. that way. But eventually it yeah. takes you off, off course. I don't think that this is generally known. I've been in Christ for a few years when I began to see it. I, I was in my early 20s when this kind of registered with me given you gotta you got to you got to get in line with what God's doing. And if you don't know what he's doing, stick your nose in the Bible and get it out of those other and find out what God's doing. He's delivering us from the world. He's preparing us for heaven. He's, he he wants us to be end up like Jesus. So if you're not becoming more and more like Christ, you're in a, headed in another direction. Yes, you got to get corrected. Yeah. It's got to be corrected. Two can't walk together unless they be agreed. There's all kind of people disagree with God. Yeah. Today with India rubber theology, I mean, there's people disagree with God about, you know, sins of sodomy and abortion and yeah. things like this, and they disagree with God. They don't yeah. agree with him. Amen. God says, be holy. They say, well, no, we can't be holy. Mm -hmm. They disagree with him. See, they disagree. Yeah. What's the penalty for disagreeing? God doesn't walk with you. Yes, amen. Amen. That's the penalty. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are willing to pay it because they don't realize. <laughs> they don't realize where a person God's not with is going to end up. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is not going to be with God. Uh -huh. amen. You can't be headed south to hell and end up in heaven north if you're not walking with God. Amen. It just won't happen. Yeah. This is taught. See, this is what Amos is teaching and and. God is reasoning with Israel. Look, you're going a different direction, and I'm going, and I'm not changing my direction. Right. You've got to get on course. And if you read the apostolic writings, the epistles to the churches, you'll, you'll find out that this is a constant appeal for people to get on the, mm -hmm. get on the right target, have the right objective, Make it your aim to be ready for the day of judgment. Because if you're not ready, you won't pass. Amen. Yes. Be ready for the coming of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Be ready. Yeah. Such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. If you're not ready, well, you remember those five fools virgins weren't ready? Yes. They didn't get to get in one of the lesser rooms of heaven. <laughs> they didn't get in. Parents yeah. Yeah. weren't ready. See? How do you get ready? <laughs> By walking with the Lord. If you don't know what that means, you can figure it out. If you read what Jesus said, Jesus said, now look, if you want to be one of my disciples, and a disciple is is a learner, it's a it's a like a scholastic word. It's a pupil. If you want Jesus to teach you, and you can't really go to heaven without Jesus teaching you, 
Jesus said, now, if you want to be my disciple, you can't love anybody more than me. Not your mother, not your father, not your brother, not your sister, not your own life. You can't. I will not teach you if I'm second to anybody. This is why some people never learn. Jesus is like number two. That would be kind of a high ranking today. He says, now, if you do not take up your cross every day and follow me, you can't be my disciple. I won't admit you into the class. You will not be able to walk with me. You'll not be able to follow me. I'll lose you along the way. He tells you. If you love your life, if that's what you're wanting, you're, you're, you're sort of self-centered, as they say. He that loveth his life shall lose it, Jesus said. Amen. He that loses his life for my sake shall find it. See, if you, if you just read what Jesus said, you can kind of figure this out. That I've got to arrange my life and arrange my agenda so nothing competes with Christ and I'm not going a different direction. Now, you may have to change your career. There's just things like that have to happen. You have to change your preference, what you want to do with your life. You may have to change that. But now you've now's the time to change. Any, if any change is going to be made, now's the time to do it. See? And the book of Amos is telling you, you've got to be agreed. God tells us where he's going. We talk about this frequently in he, Ephesians 4. He tells you that Jesus is exalted and has given gifts to the church, apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, Amen. for the work of the ministry, Amen. till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, till we're all what God is, Christ is working through every member and the church edifies itself in love. He tells you where he's going. He tells you where he's going. And then he, the Holy Spirit saying, come and go with us. The Spirit and the bride Amen. say come. See, that's, 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 that's the call. Join. Join with people that are following me. They may look weird to other people, but join with them. Wherever, they're, they're here and there. Learn to spot them. And, you, and learn from them. Amos. Now we're still just in the beginning of his judgment of Israel, but he did, he said this because he had set his love upon them and chose them above everybody else. And so he does when God does that. He expects some return, Amen. Amen. which means salvation is calculated to produce yes. Amen. this return. Yes. All right. Any of you have something you'd like to add? Yes, Brother Ricky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, in this text in Amos, both of them are walking. Yes. yes. <laughs> Can two walk, walk. Yes. together? So salvation is a collaborative effort between men and God. It's not does God work or do you work. Mm. It's, a, it's a unified work. Yeah, that's There's right. affinity yeah. in the work so that mm -hmm. you actually work together with God in Amen. His Word. Yes. Amen. See, and so it isn't, it isn't, people have a confused idea about this, but it's, 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 it's a single effort. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's where you are prepared for the greater work to come. Yes, sir, if yeah. you haven't learned to work with God here, how will you be able to work with Him there? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm yes. sorry, but there isn't this great orientation yeah. that's going to take place when you get there. <laughs> it isn't like that. Now is where you orient and <laughs> learn right. to Amen. work in that's God's right. work. See, in the world yeah. to come, it isn't, I'm going to go off and kind of do my own thing. You know, I've got this mm -hmm. purpose I want. It's, it's going to be all about His work. So it's got to be all about His work here. Amen. See, and so I, I'm thankful for how you, how you painted that picture of a journey. Yes. Yeah. That, we're, uh -huh. that we're journeying and moving in, in a single direction together. Would you amen. say this would be an appropriate description? Workers together with yes, God? Yes, amen. 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 Yes. Good. Think about those two on the road to Emmaus. Mm -hmm. They were already, of course, talking about the things that had happened mm -hmm. in the stranger kingdom. Uh -huh. 
he began to question and they had a lot to say about that and then of course as the more they walked the more he talked got on course man. and the more they were drawn to what he was saying oh no, don't leave us please come in yeah yeah <coughs> then when they when he left they were going the same same, same direction Jesus that's right was going. Amen. Amen. Back and told the disciples <laughs> Amen. Amen. that was still on the day he rose from the dead yes right. that's right yeah, he said i will i will punish you this is quite a mercy when you think about it. That um, you know, the rest of the world, as it were, he just let them go, but his people, he punishes them yeah. because he wants them to change. He wants them to, to, yeah. to see where they're at, what they're doing. They need, they need to correct. If you judge yourself, you won't be judged. So, yeah, but see, now we we it's called chasing. He chastens those who who whoever he receives. He, he chastens them. Yeah, well, it loves. isn't because he hates them; it's because he loves them. Yeah. And so you know, when you when you chasten one of your children, you know that at the time they may think, "Why are you being so hard on me?" But later, see, when when the chasing doesn't work, does its work, then they see it's because he loved. Yeah. That's Amen. Right. Make straight paths for your feet. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hebrews says, "Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way." Yes. Right. Some uh -huh. say, "Lest he break your way." Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he, the bait is to be, get, keep people in the right path. That's what it's all about. Amen. Anyone else tonight? All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful that you're the one that makes the vital determinations and how grateful we are for the grace you give for us to line up with your agenda. We have found it to be very enjoy in very joyful and satisfactory to accompany you in the fulfillment of your purpose so we pray that you give us continued grace to stay on the road in jesus name amen